The two uh, language areas are the Wernicke's area, which is here located, uh, it's about that big, and here in front, in the prefrontal cortex, here you have the uh, Broca's area. Studies of people with brain damage have shown that these areas are vital for language development. If you have a lesion of Broca, the people cannot speak in an articulated language, but they understand language. Whereas if you have a Wernicke's area, the people can speak uh, from a motor point of view, but they do not understand language. Broca's and Wernicke's areas have their counterparts in all primate brains. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to communicate among themselves or with us. Is there anything else you want to talk about? But Pambanisha's conversations with Bill are always abrupt. She does not produce long sequences of symbols. It's almost always just one symbol at a time. And it's never more than two. Often our, our dialogues are based on the kind of... They open up the question with a one lexigram utterance and then we go through the whole yes and no determination of exactly uh, what it is they're trying to say. Because the whole issue of a subject, a verb, and an object was not something that, that we required of them. It was enough that they engaged in these one lexigram utterance. Uh, these regions in, in human, again, are expanded, uh, are more complex. The neuronal substrate that permit us to communicate with an, uh, uh, with an articulated language and understand language are missing in the chimpanzee. But there's another decisive difference between the two primate brains. So that would be the region that you see here on top, here in the chimpanzee, here in the human. The frontal lobe of the human brain is vastly expanded. Our advanced capabilities are stored in the frontal areas of the brain. Memory, judgment, emotion, and, and, and all these, this type of process that are, that are uh, eventually uniquely human. It's the highly developed prefrontal cortex that allows us to perform a trick which separates us from animals, even at an early age. Here, children are asked to guess what's inside a matchbox. Having been shown the contents, they're asked another question. What will the next child say is inside the box? Children under the age of four have a hard time separating their knowledge from that of others. But older children have crossed a mental threshold and realize that others could have ideas that they know to be wrong. Psychologists call this ability theory of mind and believe it to be one of the most important differences between the way chimpanzees and humans think. But there are signs that apes possess a rudimentary form of this ability. Here, food has been placed in clear view on top of one bucket, but also hidden behind another. Two chimpanzees in separate rooms are waiting for the doors to open. One is dominant within the group. The other is subordinate, and only she can see the hidden food. So the subordinate can see where is the food located, while the dominant cannot. Now, when you release the subordinate, the subordinates typically go and get the food in this situation. For the next experiment, a change is implemented. The food is made visible for the dominant ape as well, and the subordinate animal reacts differently. Then the subordinate is more hesitant. 
you see that subordinates go less. So they are taking into account what the dominant has seen. This shows that the subordinate ape has an understanding of what's going on in the other animal's mind. This is one of the, the parts of theory of mind, to being able to attribute perceptions or knowledge. But unlike a four-year-old, an ape can probably never fully master the theory of mind. I think one of the main differences is our ability to think about others, what others think, what others do not think, what others believe, what others do not believe. For a human child, theory of mind is the key to all the important social skills they will need in the future, from empathy and cooperation to competition and manipulation. But hold on, we possess incredibly advanced language skills, the ability to build on existing knowledge and a remarkable social brain. It's almost inconceivable that humans alone possess these abilities when the genetic difference is only 1.7%. Our manuals are so much alike that it takes careful reading to discover any differences. The truth is there's a lot more going on in our nuclei than previously thought. Scientists have discovered operating sequences in the DNA helix that controls our genes. A code behind the code that explains why our brain genes are more active than chimpanzees. You can think about the genome as an ocean of junk DNA with the little genes floating in it. But near each gene are special pieces of DNA that tell the gene when to come on and when to come off. And it's very important These so-called transcription factors decide how often a gene will be made active and how much protein it will produce. And there's evidence that this was a major force in the differentiation of the different forms of mammals in particular. How did a blue whale become so different from a mouse or a dog? Each one has essentially the same set of genes, but they're used in very different ways. We can no longer maintain that humans are superior to all other life forms. Charles Darwin and his modern day colleagues have proven that we're not the crown jewel of creation, but rather part of an ever changing world. The early stages of empathy, tool usage and language can be found in other species, just like in us in earlier times. Due to various circumstances during the last six million years, these abilities have developed drastically in humans. The story of how humans honed their capabilities and went from ape to astronaut will be the subject of the next program in our series. <laughs>